Welcome to Forward with NACI, Inspiring Entrepreneurial Action, a podcast that shares the stories of everyday entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial leaders, and the communities that support us. We hope that this diverse collection of stories brings you inspiration, inspires you to take action, and ignites entrepreneurship in your community as we make our way forward together. Welcome to Forward with NACI. This episode is a replay of an inspiring discussion held during the 2021 Future Building Summit in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was sponsored by the Kauffman Foundation and included inspiring thinkers and leaders from all sectors, government, business, policy, and philanthropy. We talk about charting a new course and rebuilding in 2022. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy. At this time, it's my pleasure to welcome um, a, a thought leader who has a wonderful story to tell. Also, um, as I mentioned earlier, the Kauffman Foundation has been supportive of NACI's work literally from day one. So it is my absolute pleasure to welcome uh, Philip Gaskin, who serves as the Vice President of Entrepreneurship for the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation, uh, to come up on stage and, and share with us a little bit um, of his story and what the Kaufman Foundation is, is doing um, to advance ecosystem work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. First, it's really embarrassing when you wear the same outfit that's on the picture. <laughs> not plan that. No, did not plan that. Um, thank you all. Thank you here and out online. I am, um, you know, Senator Klobuchar's words really uh, rang true to me and uh, some things that I'll share about opportunity or a lack of access to opportunity, lack of access to support, knowledge and funding and all of those things that can get in the way of, um, of entrepreneurship. And, you know, it, I was 34 years old um, when I first heard a word that would really would change my life. It was at a celebration of life ceremony for my father. Um, and after the service, a man came up to me and he said, you know, he didn't know my father that well, but he said, your father was a good man. He was a really good entrepreneur. Now in my 34 years, here's what I known to um, know about my father and the man who raised me. I knew he was a dark skinned man that grew up in rural North Carolina during Jim Crow. Uh, I knew he had played uh, baseball. I wanted to play baseball in the Negro League, but he got hurt. Um, I knew he moved to Los Angeles from North Carolina because it was seen as a new frontier for black men. I knew he spent years working maintenance at stores and offices. And I knew that in his late forties, he opened up one convenience store and then another. But I had never known that my dad was an entrepreneur. In fact, I never even knew what the word meant. So now how can that be, right? So riddle me this, how can a man grow up, go to college, grow up in America, go to college and not know the word entrepreneur until he's 34 years old? And um, well, that's the answer to that riddle. The answer to that riddle is what I'm gonna share with you, share with you today. Because understanding why I didn't know that word entrepreneur may be the key to unlocking billions, even trillions of dollars in economic development for our communities while creating opportunities for millions who don't have it right now. The truth is that the last great untapped economic force in America is hiding in plain sight. And so are the institutions that are best positioned to propel it. So this is where the story comes back to my father. Uh, we lived near a, a long street in Los Angeles that crossed through many kinds of neighborhoods. And so for us, it was more than a boulevard. It was, it was like a, more like a Berlin Wall because the life experiences were vastly different depending on what side of that boulevard you lived on. If you lived on the north side of the street, you were in a zip code that had a very good reputation. And these were children of parents that were very famous and or had good reputations, right? They all knew what entrepreneurs were. But if you lived on the south side, 
just one block away in a different zip code like myself, different experiences. And that wasn't all that was different. It was the edge of where those other people lived, where the grass wasn't as green, the houses weren't as big, the future wasn't as bright, the ambulances didn't get there as fast, the police sure did, just one block away. So my dad and I had a ritual starting in the fifth grade. He'd pick me up after school, and about four times a month, we'd go to a bank. Sometimes it was the same bank. Finally, I said to him, why do we go to so many banks? He said, I'll tell you when you get older. One of those, same thing you said about the facts of life. I'll tell you when you get older. Turns out he was trying to get that first loan to open a chain of convenience stores. But he lived one zip code away from what they considered worthy. Just that one block away. You know, he didn't know about redlining. He didn't know that banks literally drew red lines on a map, you know, between those that they would lend to and those they wouldn't. But he was always the other. And this went on for four years. Time after time, he was told he just wasn't worthy. And so it wasn't just my father who had that sense of other. So did I. In high school, I was a really good student. I took honors courses and I did well. But when I told my guidance counselor that I wanted to apply to Ivy League schools, he said, you? You're not Ivy League material. So I never applied. You know how long that stayed with me in life? You know, um, how much it limited me in the years, in the years that followed. So it's hard to overstate what it does to a person day after day to be seen as the other, of being told again and again that you're not enough. It's hard to describe the anger, the frustration, and that urge to act it out in a society that will condemn you if you do. So why do I tell you all this? Well, it turns out I learned the definition of entrepreneur in time to realize that there are millions of people across America today who have the same genius as my father. But too many of them live that one block away or that one rural county away. Too many are seen as the other. But I believe they represent the greatest untapped source of, America, of economic growth and development in America today. This is where all of you come in. You out there too. I believe the institutions that are in the best position to support the other, to play a role in unleashing their ability and talent is also hiding in plain sight. After all, who knows more about being the other than you? America's community colleges. Together you make up one of the largest systems of higher education on the planet. And yet, for more than a century, you've been underestimated. You know, we tend to look to four-year colleges and universities as the end-all, be-all of learning. And yet, in 2020, the Census Bureau found that less than three in 10 Americans will ever earn a four-year college degree. What about the other 70%? Why do we insist on seeing community college merely as a last resort? And why on earth do we still believe that the primary mission of community colleges is to serve as a two-year way station on the, year, on the way to four-year college degree? All of you are excellent at what you do. Yet, despite your best efforts, Columbia University has found that while 81% of students entering community college say uh, aspire to earn a four-year degree, but only 15% of them actually do so. It's because life, you know, kids, family, debts, all those things get in the way. Now, it may not be my, my place to say, but maybe it's time for community colleges to focus on something else. We all know what is happening in too many communities. The economy's changing. Every job from plumbing 
to data entry, to accounting is being radically transformed by digital technology. Most people don't know what to do about it. We've got employers that have open jobs that they don't know how to fill. We've got potential employees that have skills, but they don't know how to market them. High school graduates have diplomas that feel like tickets to nowhere. Why? Well, I believe we have a leadership vacuum because at the national level, no one is consistently leading this conversation. Senator Klobuchar's remarks were very, very meaningful, and I appreciate them a great deal. That's exactly what we need. At the local level, nobody knows how to lead the transformation. So from where I've said, all of you have the power that nobody else in this country can match. You sit at the center of every community in America that needs a way forward. Now, I'm sure some of you in the audience have taught physics. So you know that lesson about what it takes to move impossible amounts of weight. It comes down to the lever and the fulcrum. So the further the fulcrum is from the weight, the harder it is to lift it. And the closer the fulcrum is to the weight, the easier it is to lift and move just about anything. Well, I believe that community colleges can be that fulcrum. If you look at the great universities, many are not in the center of town in the same way that community colleges are. So by definition, you are closer to the challenges and the realities that are on the ground in the best position to convene those conversations that we were, we were hearing about, connecting local employers, citizens, elected officials, and to train workers for careers that meet local needs while making a good living. You're already at the heart of America's communities and you have everything you need to be the heartbeat of those communities. So now you invited me here today to talk about ecosystem building on campus, but I want you to think bigger than that. Much, much bigger. I want community colleges to see yourselves as the vital center of an entrepreneurial ecosystem across your entire community. So how do you do this? How do you network with the mayor's office? How do you remove those barriers that stand in the way? or get everyone in town to come to you and see you as the place where conversation and inspiration happen, where all parties come together and create solutions. So at the Kauffman Foundation, we have identified seven design principles for ecosystem building. Some of you may be familiar with, and these are the principles that need to be baked into everything ecosystem builders do. First, put entrepreneurs front and center if entrepreneurs are not in the room, creative thinking and ideas for solutions may not happen. Second, foster conversations. Listen most of the time. Make sure everyone is heard. Third, enlist collaborators and invite everyone. Always think and ask the question, who is not in the room that should be here? Fourth, live the values you are trying to achieve. So this includes everything that I'm saying on this list. Fifth, connect people from the bottom up, from the outside in, from the top down. Everyone has a role in ecosystem building. It's a team sport. Sixth, tell your community's authentic story. Be authentic and embrace the strengths and gifts of your own community versus trying to emulate somewhere else. How many times do we hear, how do we become the next Silicon Valley? No offense to anyone coming from Silicon Valley. It's an incredibly wonderfully dense network, but it can be exclusive. It's hard to get in. And seventh, start and then be patient. Trust building and creating a new model of economic development like we're talking about takes time. It's about building a culture you know, that says those who live one block over, we see you, we understand your dreams and we're going to help make them a reality. And so again, at Kauffman Foundation, we work with organizations to build those ecosystems because our passion is to change the conditions for entrepreneurs by changing the systems in which they operate. 
And so our, in our hometown of Kansas City, we're doing this right now. So we're working with over 30 school districts and charter schools um, through our real world learning initiative. And that's to just reinvent high school and make the K through 12 diploma really mean something. So that if you wanna be an employee in a specific discipline, you're then connected to an employer who can take you in right away and see you as valuable. If you wanna be an employer, we develop skills for you to go right into a fast track program on entrepreneurship in order to learn exactly how to do that. And so the work is grounded in the principles of racial equity, diversity, and inclusion. And there are two impact goals that we're striving for. And this is Kansas City specific. Goal number one is to have a prepared workforce by 2032. And what I mean by that is at least 66% of black, indigenous, and other people of color ages 25 to 44 living in Kansas City will have a good job. Goal number two is that by 2032, 7,500 entrepreneurs in the Kansas City metro region, the whole metro, who are black, indigenous, and other people of color will start, grow, or sustain a business. And so by focusing on this, these populations, we're creating a virtuous cycle so that if they succeed, everyone else will be able to succeed. It's part of what we call America's new business plan, which you can find on our website. It's our bipartisan policy that focuses on creating new jobs and rebuilding an equitable economy that works for everyone. Mayors use this plan, entrepreneurs use this plan, ecosystem builders use this plan, and so can all of you. Highly recommend it. It's how you become the heartbeat of a community. You know, I'd love to see every community college have a CEO, a chief entrepreneurial officer. <laughs> who has just one job. Like we say, the field goal kicker, you got one job, just make the extra point. Um, <laughs> to entrepreneurially and creatively think about everything on campus and in the community all day, every day and to constantly find innovative ways to connect connect the two to be there for people like my dad well you know after hearing no from bank after bank after bank he finally heard yes a uh, black owned bank in south los angeles um, saw him as worthy and gave him a loan and i remember how elated he was he said, someone finally trusted me. And those investments paid off. My dad wasn't just a good entrepreneur, he was a good asset to the community because for 20 years, he created jobs and gave back to the neighborhood. And so again, this is not about taking from one place and putting into another, not from taking from another population, giving to another, it's about seeing you know, it's about seeing that America will be more innovative if people like my dad have the same opportunity as everyone else to succeed and thrive. And it's about recognizing that community colleges are not an afterthought, but the heartbeat of communities with the potential to bring all parties together to compete and win in the digital economy. It's time for all of us to look that one block over, to see the genius that's waiting to be ignited and the millions of entrepreneurs who just need a chance to show what they can do. They're not the other, they're us, they're all of us, they're the future of this country. And it's long past time that we recognize, like it or not, that we are all in this together. And that's exactly how it should be. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, uh, Philip. That was inspirational. We appreciate in this room and the hundreds of people that are, are listening from around the country, your support and embrace of community college. And I think your comments really connected to the conversation that we've been having. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for joining us today. 
We hope that you will continue to explore the many ways to define entrepreneurship with NACI as we celebrate opportunity, failing forward, and success, learning from one another along the way. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite platform and follow at NACI on social media and learn more about us at NACI.com forward slash podcast. Stay tuned for a new episode each week. We look forward to making our way forward together with you. Have you heard about our latest book, Impact Ed, How Community College Entrepreneurship Creates Equity and Prosperity? This is our roadmap for building back better in 50 states and globally. In each chapter, we share the inspiring stories of everyday entrepreneurs and explain how community colleges play a crucial role in their success. Visit us at nacy.com forward slash impact ed to order your copy now and join us in this work. Are you curious about what's coming up next in the NACI community? Join us on the second Wednesday of every month at 12 p.m. Eastern to set yourself up to be productive and impactful with NACI by your side. We'll share about events, ways to get involved, and we'll have an open conversation featuring questions you're asking or problems you're facing. So join us on the second Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern for Up Next with NACI. More information at nacy.com slash up next.